Hi guys, welcome back to another video and to the uh, the last part of the recent sort of three part vintage uh, revisit if you like and we're ending it with the V6 um, Thomas Blue. Now a, a while ago I did film one of the ordinary V6s so for this I thought I'd finish on what is kind of their, like, well it is their most expensive kind of strap type in their standard lineup. So I thought I'd have a look at one of those and then sort of give you my thoughts on it. Uh, it's also the very last guitar uh, I will ever have on this channel that I've bought specifically for reviewing and then selling on. Um, so that won't really be happening on the channel uh, going forward. We're going to be doing sort of different things uh, from now on. So this is kind of like the end of that chapter and, and we'll see what kind of comes next. Uh, but before I go on to the spec and everything of this guitar, I want to take you back a couple of days, uh, back to my bench when I first unboxed it. Um, so you can see exactly what it was like um, out of the box. So over to my workbench then, so you can see how this thing is unboxed. Uh, if you follow the YouTube community tab uh, a few weeks ago, you would have seen that this is actually the second uh, one because the first one they sent, um, it just had, it had too many issues to kind of fix. But before I get to kind of getting this one uh, more presentable, I thought I'd show you exactly how it is now. So let's turn it around and I'll show you uh, some close-ups. So here we go then. This is the Thomas Blue uh, straight out of the box. So the first thing I'll notice when I took it out of the box is the rosewood fretboard is definitely quite dry, which is fair enough, you know, that's obviously something I'll sort now. In terms of uh, the, the frets, they're not, they're not the worst I've ever seen. And in terms of their scratchiness, they're pretty good actually on this one. Uh, obviously I will give them a, a nicer polish, but no, no sort of major issues. The only thing that's weird is that this bit of wear here, um, obviously it's a worn, you know, a worn guitar in general, but this bit here, I don't think is part of the, the sort of template if you like, and I can't get it off. So I'm not sure if that's just something unique or if that's something that's happened and because it's relic, they've gone, you know, never mind, it's all, it's all good. Um, in terms of action and stuff like that out of the box, again, not, you know, not terrible. This one, this one's, you know, pretty good, but with how dry that rosewood is, definitely polish these up a little bit more. Uh, I'll do that now and then we'll go back to my, uh, go back to my room at home and we'll, uh, we'll carry on. So I haven't actually done a great deal to it for, for the video. All I've done is hydrate that fingerboard uh, that you saw was pretty dry. Uh, given the frets a bit more of a polish just because they feel a little bit nicer to play. And then just a general setup, you know, getting the action where I want it, checking the net relief, intonation, all that sort of stuff. And, and that's it. And it's made it already, you know, before it's even had the full works, it's, it's already made it 10 times better. And, you know, it's always annoying with these guitars. I mean, all three of these out of the box just didn't have that last little step of just making them nice for whoever, it, you know, whoever happens to be receiving the guitar on the other end. And that is a huge issue with, uh, with these guitars for sure. And uh, we'll talk more about that later. So firstly, let's go over the specs of the guitar and uh, sort of give you a look at how the relicking looks. So body wise, you are getting an American older body. And obviously this one's got their, they're kind of distressed. Uh, the finish is satin and very thin and you could easily wear this more uh, if you wanted to, uh, for sure. As I said, that bit there, I'm not sure uh, if that was supposed to be part of it. Um, it just, you know, it fits with the vibe, but it's a little bit weird that bit. Uh, one bit that is supposed to be part of it though, and if you're uh, very observant, you'd have already noticed, is we have a missing screw in the trend there. That is supposed to be there, and um, on some of the models I've seen, it's this one, uh, and on most of them, it tends, tends to be this one here. So a little bit of a funny thing, but it is actually uh, meant to be that way. And I'll show you the full-size trend, trend block on the back there as well. Uh, no issues with the trem or the hardware in general, to be fair. I'll show you the neck just here. So as I say, rosewood fingerboard. So the fact that you are still getting rosewood at this price point with the normal V6 as well, is a huge plus because you know it's a good piece of rosewood as well if you look at the slab it's a it's a decent slab of rosewood and for me that that kind of it goes a long way for me kind of liking them because you know we're seeing too many kind of 
not quite their replacements and it's nice to still have it. And then you also get medium jumbo frets uh, as well. It's listed as a seven and a half inch radius on paper. But if I look at it visually and feel it, and I own seven and a half inch radius strats and like, I'm certain that is more like the normal 10 that they do. So it depends, you wanna go on paper, it's seven and a half, but to me, and I haven't got the, gain, uh, the feelers to measure it, um, but I'm certain it's not a seven and a half. I think it's more like nine and a half or 10. Um, but there we go, that it is what it is. Let me show you the nut just there. So you got this kind of graph tech new bone type of nut and the fitting is a little bit, it doesn't look the best. There's a little bit of a gap at the top. I'm, the camera probably won't focus on it, but maybe you can see that. Um, you know, it's all in the right place and the, it's cut right and stuff, but visually it's a little bit off. Um, and then let's show you the machine heads. So you got these Wilkinson kind of easy lock. They're like a Cluson style, except for the fact they've got two holes in so you can lock the string. Um, someone on the uh, on the E there has, has messed that up. So I'll sort that out. But, um, you know, really good tuners. The only thing is, like we said before, where they're the aged ones and they're kind of rusted, that actually affects how they feel compared to the normal one because they're a little bit kind of, a little bit tight, but they work really well and that, you know, as I say, the hardware, generally speaking, is uh, is pretty good. The only bit of the relic in that I'm sure, again, isn't supposed to be on there. Hang on, if I can get the camera to pick this up. Where is it? There. Can you see that there? That little dink? So obviously, you know, this is a relic finish, but I'm fairly sure they wouldn't put a little chip in the neck. So that's obviously been missed on the QC uh, as well. So I think that's enough rambling for now. Let's get on to some sounds uh, and then I'll kind of do a summary of, of the three guitars we've looked at.
So there you go, you heard a little bit more about the sounds. Uh, this bucker switch that I tried to show you at the end, uh, what it's supposed to do is kind of take a bit of top end off if you've got a lot of drive to make it a bit easier on the ears. And also when you're live, you know, if, you, if you've got any kind of noise issues, this is supposed to, supposed to help that. Uh, to me, in here at least, I can kind of hear what it's doing, but you know, I haven't got this on any of my other strats and to me it is a little bit of a gimmick. Um, and I'm not sure really if, if I'd miss it, well, I wouldn't miss it, you know. Um, I'm sure it has come in handy for some people when they're live, but for me, you know, it's kind of just there for, just for the sake of it really. I, I'm not really a, a massive kind of convert for the bucker switch, shall we say. But I thought I'd show you kind of how it sounds in and out. Um, in terms of, like I say, the pickups and that though, and these are the same pickups that are in the V6 that I filmed before, uh, the normal one. And, you know, they're perfectly respectable Stratocaster sounds, just like all of these models have been that we've looked at. I haven't disliked the sound of any of them, and I haven't disliked the bridges or the tuners or, you know, the hardware in general is pretty good. So... I'm, I kind of, I just, I just know that there's such a lot of guitar in these and the telly and the Les Paul for the money. But I'm having this battle in my mind of like, because every single one has needed, you know, someone with experience to get it to the right place. And I know that the vast majority of these are sold just online. You know, no one looks at them. They're just, they're like this box shifting, isn't it? And Therefore, I know that the chances are, if you go out and buy one of these, or any of the vintage guitars I've looked at, the chances are, and I'd say it's probably like an 85% chance, that you're going to get it, and it's going to be set up like crap. It's going to have like, you know, just might have fret issues. It's, it's going to have problems, and it's just difficult to then say, yeah, I think these are really good, with that in my mind. Because... When someone finishes them, then I can really stand behind them. But I just know that that's not the case most of the time. So all I can really say is if you are looking at these guitars, either you buy one used and you're, you know, pretty experienced with fret work and setup work, and then you'll be quite happy to just get it to where you want it. Or if you buy one new, you've got to make sure that someone's going to get it up to standard because if they just ship it to you as it comes, there's a high, high, high chance that it's just not going to be good enough. And then I, you know, your money's way better elsewhere. So it's, it's real difficult because like I said, I do think they're really good. I think there's a lot of magic and enjoyment for the price in these guitars that you, you don't really get anywhere else, but only once they're up to, you know, the best they can be. And, that's what I've said on all these videos, and it's something that is just bothering me to say, yeah, I recommend them, even though I know of those problems. But I think I've been pretty clear on it, and you know, hopefully you kind of see where I'm coming from. And the only thing I guess left to say is my personal kind of favorite of, of the Holy Trinity, should we say, that they make. And for me, the V52 or V62, probably the 62 for me, because I love a rosewood board. That for me is is genuinely one of the one of the best T-types for the money, uh, full stop. It's it's a brilliant guitar. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't change anything on it. Um, I wouldn't change the pickups. I'd probably change the pots and switch and jack because it's cheap and easy. Um, but other than that, you know, I just think it's a great, great guitar. So hopefully you've enjoyed this kind of three part roundup of vintage guitars. It might sound like I've been fairly harsh and bearing in mind I bought them all to sell. And I've just been honest with you um, about kind of how they are and if ever you're looking at them kind of thing. And this one will be linked down below. And, uh, and that's it. So I will see you all in another video.